First of all, announcement. If you uh, look at the class schedule, next week is test two. Mm -hmm. Friday, right? A week from Friday. I posted a practice test. And Wednesday, before the test, I'll have a review class. We'll just take questions. All right. So, we are talking about Minimax estimators. And just to review what we did last time, we had a loss function. Think of that as a distance between theta and theta half. And it's random, but the mean of that is the risk function, which is a function of theta. And if we look at the maximum risk and say, which, what is the smallest I can make an overall estimator, that was the mean of that risk. And our goal really is to say, what estimator can achieve that? What estimator has a maximum risk which is equal to that smallest possible maximum risk, the minimax estimator? But then we talked about a different type of uh, estimator, the Bayes estimator, which instead of taking the maximum risk, we take the integral of the risk with respect to some prior. And if we minimize this instead of this, instead of the maximum, we get the Bayes estimator with respect to that prior. And here's the, the plan. The plan is to show you, first of all, finding the minimizer of this is fairly easy, we'll see, at least in many cases. Whereas directly trying to find something which minimizes this maximum is very hard. But we can minimize this, and then if we choose the prior carefully, it will also be the minimax estimator. So we use the base estimator as a root to getting the minimax. So let's talk a bit about Bayes estimators. How am I going to find the estimator that minimizes this integral? Now remember, we're using the word Bayes estimator a little bit differently than we did earlier, which was uh, to compute the posterior mean. But it turns out what we're going to see is they're, they're basically the same thing. So what I'm going to show you today is that there's a different way to write this Bayes risk. This is the Bayes risk. There's a different form for the Bayes risk a different formula, and when we write the other formula, you will see how to compute the answer. We write it this way because this is, well, not our definition, but also it's easy to prove things about the estimator when it's written in this form. So let's, let's derive a different expression for the Bayes risk, and then I'll show you that they're the same. So, Remember the way we talked about getting the Bayes estimator before when I introduced it was to go through Bayes theorem. I haven't mentioned anything about Bayes theorem here, right? I just said compute this risk function and integrate it over the prior. Now let's go back to the way I talked about it before, which is remember we talked about getting the posterior density of theta, which was what? It was the prior times the likelihood. So um, it was. Yeah, let's write it this way. Likelihood times prior. So that defined the distribution for theta given x, where remember in this Bayesian formulation, theta is regarded as a random variable. Okay. Now what you might do is first find this posterior distribution and say, well, now I have a distribution over theta. Maybe I can integrate the loss function over that. So this has yet another name. I know it gets a bit confusing here, but I'll write this one with a small r. It just means take the loss function. And keep in mind that theta hat here, I'll write it this way, is a function of the data. Right? And now I can integrate it with respect to So this is a sort of different way of dealing with the loss function. Here we dealt with the loss function by taking the mean of it with respect to the sampling distribution. Here I'm saying let's do something different. Let's first of all do Bayes theorem, get the posterior density for theta. Now I take my loss function, so think about you know theta minus theta hat squared. That's always a good one to have in mind. And directly take the loss function. I don't know what that loss function 
is equal to because it you know it depends on theta and so on. But I have a distribution of theta now. So I can integrate that, and that's just going to be some number, it's going to depend on the data, it's going to depend on the estimator, but I've integrated out theta. Okay, so that's called the posterior Because it's the integral of the loss, not with respect to this one was with respect to the x's given theta. This one with respect to theta given x is reversed. Theorem 6 at the top of page 6, which is first of all, I claim that we can relate this to what we did over here. Actually, to do that, let's also notice that um, one more thing, which is if we again take this Bayesian point of view and think of theta as random, then I can think of there as being a joint distribution. Um, in fact, so as not to confuse things, I called it M in the notes, the marginal. The meaning of this is I'm treating in the Bayesian world, everything is random, so I can write this as the distribution. What's this called? This is the distribution of the x's, which I can write as the distribution of the x's and theta. Make sure you the same notation. Here. Just on theta, find the distribution of theta, d theta. And I'm just using the law of total probability. Probability of x is the probability of x given theta times the probability of theta. Sum it up. So, this, in other words, once you put a prior down, our model, that's our model, that's the distribution of the x's, and the prior to find a joint distribution over the x's. Some sort of, you know, it's almost sort of like if I didn't have any data and I had a guess at the x, this is the distribution I would use. I'm making use of the prior. And so here's the, here's what the, uh, the claim is. First of all, the first claim is that this base risk here, the way we originally defined base risk. It's written here as the integral over the original risk times the prior, but an alternative way to write it is that it's the posterior risk times this marginal distribution. Hopefully when I prove this with a few lines long, it will all start to make sense. Because I know the word risk gets used like three different times here, different ways of defining things. And really, just, just to back, back up a bit and summarize, the point is simply this. This is how we define Bayes' risk, but there's another way of rewriting it, which is this way. And the reason why we want to do it is because this form we're going to see allows us to actually find the Bayes estimator very easily. In particular, if I find that theta hat minimize this quantity, allowed to be, let me just write that as theta hat by of x1 and x. So the estimator can depend on the data. In fact, it better depend on the data. So let me just say why that's true, first of all, before we prove anything. Just look at this expression. If I can minimize this for each x, everything's non-negative. This is a density. These risk functions are assumed to be non-negative. If I minimize this for every x, then I've minimized the integral. Right? If I want to minimize a sum, if I minimize something for each element of the sum, then I've minimized the whole sum. So an easy way to minimize this whole thing, overall, is just to minimize this for every value of x. So it's clear that if I find the minimizer of this, then I've minimized the whole thing, and therefore I've minimized 
this. But more importantly, you'll see when we do a couple of examples that this thing is easy to minimize in many cases. So we can actually compute it in this formula. So let me summarize that. For theoretical reasons, we often work with the definition of Bayes' risk this way. For calculation, we usually rewrite it this way and notice that we just have to minimize this quantity, and that just turns out to be easier in many cases. Okay, this will all make sense when we do some examples, I think, because I know, again, I know I realize there's a lot of terminology here to get confusing, but let's actually just go through the proof that this is the same as this. And, the, oh, and let me just say a word before we do the proof what we're really doing. This risk itself, don't forget, was an expected value, right? Here. What was the distribution we used? X given theta. So what we're doing here is using the distribution of X given theta and then the distribution of theta. And all we're doing the other one is the other way around. Theta given X and X. We're just switching the interval. So let's actually write out the proof. So this is again the problem that makes sense. That and we're still, you know, we're doing this, say, suppose somebody's given us an estimator, data hat, we're trying to evaluate its risk. So this is a function of the data. The definition of the Bayes risk was, what did we say? We said take the risk function and integrate it with respect to the surprise. Now all I'm going to do is plug in what's the definition of the risk function. So I have the integral here. The risk function was defined to be the mean of the loss function. So let me make room for this. Uh, so th this is the mean of the loss function. So I have to take the loss function. And I should, I should keep writing this theta hat as a function of x1 and xn. I may drop that sometimes, but just keep in mind it really is a function of x1 and xn. And then we multiply that by the distribution of x. And then we integrate it back. So this card here that I'm putting a box around is just writing out in gory detail what that was. And now I still have times pi of theta d theta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two things together. This is the distribution of x given theta times the probability of theta. So what is that? That's the joint probability of x and theta. So this is the integral of all these things, the loss function. I'm going to get a bit lazy here to write L. And then the joint probability of x1, xn, and theta times all these things. But now I'm going to write it the other way. The distribution of x and theta is a distribution of theta given x times the probability of x. So this is the distribution of theta given x times the probability of x. And what have I got? On the, on the inside, I can write, look at what I have. I have the integral of the loss times this posterior, and I'm going to bring the d theta over here. And then I have what's left over is p of x1 and xn. But this is just the definition of this. So we're left with this by, and that was the claim. That's what we folks times P of proves the result. We're just switching the order of integration. So we can think of the Bayes risk as take the usual risk function and multiply by the prior and integrate it, or Take the posterior risk and multiply it by this joint distribution for x. Either way. But again, now we see that to find the Bayes estimator, it's sufficient to minimize this for each x. 
minimize the conspirators with the ETX, I've now found the Bayes estimator. And now let me convince you that's often, not always, but often easy to do. Here, and let's do the canonical example, which will be L2 risk. So again, the L2 loss function is what? This is beta, minus beta hat squared. Let's find the Bayes estimator with that loss function. So uh, here we go. What do I have to do? Okay, so what, what I'm going to use is this form. It says find the posterior distribution and integrate the loss function. So little r is, by definition, it's theta minus theta hat squared times the posterior density. I want to find the theta hat, which can depend on these x's, it minimizes, no problem. And this is just something, once I fix the x's here, this is just some number. I'm just going to take the derivative with respect to theta hat, instead of equal to zero. Think of this as a function of theta hat. Take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So we get that 2 times theta hat minus theta times this. Minus, so when I take the derivative. Okay. And for that matter, when I'm solving this, you can see I can get rid of the 2, right? It doesn't change anything. And so what do I get here? Remember, this is now just some function of x1, xn. That's not the parameter. It's an estimator. It's a function of x1, xn. So when I'm integrating with respect, whoops, the, uh, that was wrong. I put the wrong. This is the posterior. Sorry about that. Sorry, it's the, in, it's the inner thing we're doing right here. So this doesn't depend on theta. So when I take, let's split this up into two integrals. I get theta hat times, <coughs> what's the integral of the posterior d theta? One. It's one, it's a density. Minus, and then I'm left with integral of theta and so now I've got my estimator theta hat is equal to this what's this? That's, what's this? this is the definition of the mean of the posterior distribution this is just the mean Theta with respect to the posterior density. So we've got a very simple result. For L2 loss, we can find the Bayes estimator explicitly. You just multiply the likelihood times the prior. That gives you a posterior density. So that gives you, that's a distribution. Find the mean of that distribution, and you've just found the minimizer of this thing. So you found the Bayes estimator with respect to that loss function and that risk. <coughs> and hence, as we've just shown, that also minimizes the original definition of Bayes risk. And remember, that's how I defined Bayes estimator before. As I said, just take the mean of the posterior. Now you see why. What I should have said was, the mean of the posterior is the Bayes estimator for L2 loss. So for the most commonly used loss function, which is L2, all you do is find the posterior, find its mean. You have now found the Bayes estimator. And let's, let me just re-emphasize that this is a function. So we don't know how to find the minimax estimator yet, but at least with respect to this particular loss function, the L2 loss function, we know how to get the Bayes estimator. We just find the posterior mean. Of course, it is a function of the prior. This is still a function of the 